Now that you are beginning your studies of the systems of the human body, it is important to remember that you will always be required to visually identify the structures of the system you are working on from various diagrams, so be sure to pay particular attention to them. You will also be expected to be able to describe the function of each of the structures and in some cases explain how the structure is specialized to perform its function. So welcome to Unit 8 where we will begin our studies of the human body with the digestive system. Now I could go through each structure of the digestive system and describe its function, but I don't feel that would be a good use of time as I'm confident students are very capable of identifying the functions of the structures of the digestive system on their own. Instead, I'm going to concentrate on two important structures of the digestive system and help you identify how each of these structures is well suited to their function. We will start with the stomach. The stomach is actually an expanded section of the gastrointestinal tract between the esophagus and the duodenum of the small intestine that can be described as a muscular sac. It begins at the cardiac sphincter, which controls the flow of materials coming into the stomach. The stomach is composed of three layers of smooth muscle, which are primarily responsible for mixing material that has come into the stomach with digestive enzymes and moving that material through the stomach by peristalsis. The muscular walls of the stomach are folded, which allows the stomach to expand as food enters. The tissues that line the stomach wall contain gastric glands that secrete hydrochloric acid, pepsinogen, and mucus. The hydrochloric acid kills bacteria in the food that you've consumed and converts pepsinogen into pepsin, which is the enzyme that digests proteins. The mucus helps to protect the walls of the stomach from the acidic gastric juices. At the end of the stomach is another sphincter called the pyloric sphincter. The pyloric sphincter controls the amount of acidic chyme that leaves the stomach into the duodenum. All of the characteristics that have been mentioned here are required to aid the stomach in performing its digestive functions. The second structure we will address is the small intestine. Despite its great length, the surface area of the small intestine is not sufficient enough to absorb all of the nutrients your body needs. Therefore, the structure of the small intestine contains millions of microscopic folds which act to increase the surface area. These finger-like projections, known as villi, contain many more folds, known as microvilli, which contain a set of small blood vessels and part of the lymphatic system, known as the lacteal. These blood vessels and the lacteal are used in the transportation of nutrients which are absorbed from the surface cells of the small intestine. The muscular walls of the small intestine undergo peristalsis to help move food along through the digestive tract. The inner surface of the small intestine also contains glands that secrete digestive enzymes into the intestinal tract to assist with the chemical breakdown of food. So to summarize here, the stomach has sphincter muscles at each end that control the amount of food entering and leaving the stomach. The stomach also contains gastric glands that secrete hydrochloric acid, pepsinogen, and mucus, and has a muscular wall, all of which assist in the digestive process. The small intestine has a large surface area and is highly vascularized, both of which assist in the rate of absorption of nutrients across the intestinal wall. The small intestine also has glands that secrete digestive enzymes and a muscular wall to help move food through the digestive tract. 
Other than the structure and function of the different parts of the digestive system, you will have to be able to describe in detail the digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. There are three videos in the course to assist you with this information, and they are summarized as much as they possibly can be. Also, be sure that you know and understand the function of the six chemicals that are released from the pancreas and know at least four of the six functions of the liver that are listed in the student notes.